Hi, it's Carlos from RC Advisor. Uh, today I wanted to, uh, to talk about LiPo batteries. Um, there's, there's quite a bit to them. They're really actually a little bit complicated how they work. But hopefully you'll, you'll learn a little bit more about how to take care of them, how to get the most uh, value out of them. But it used to be, you know, years ago when it first came out that um, we didn't quite understand the, the need for balancing the, the, the cells in a battery pack. And um, it, I, it wasn't long before we started using these batteries that uh, you know, the market was flooded with these standalone um, balancers. But then over time, uh, a balancing feature became a standard feature in chargers. And nowadays, you really have to look hard to find a charger without a balancer. I, 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 did, I managed to find one not, not, not that long ago. It was very low end. And, um, but that's pretty rare, you know, having a balancer is just taken uh, for, for granted as a must-have feature. And, and there's a simple reason, is safety. These batteries don't like to be undercharged, and especially they don't like to be overcharged. And, uh, you know, there used to be all these LiPo explosions and fires years ago, and you don't really hear too much about that anymore, and, and it's because of the, the balancers. Um, you know, we keep them in check, in fact, uh, it, something that you commonly see in chargers nowadays is a temperature probe so that you can even monitor the temperature of the battery as it's charging and it'll shut off it if it starts getting hot. So uh, things have come a long way. Well, something, something that I, I believe in the, in the near future is going to become another must-have feature is a discharger. You know, so, so you can cycle the battery so you'll be able to charge them up, discharge them and monitor what's going on during the whole process and let me let me let me go get go into some more details as to why i think a, a discharger is a um, is such a uh, useful feature but if you, you take a brand new battery you know this is a battery that you've never used and you charge it up and you put it on a shelf in your workshop so so you're you're storing it at, at room temperature you come back a year later that battery will have lost about 20% of its capacity, which, which I, I think is just huge. Because the rule of thumb is that when, it, after, when a battery loses 20% of its capacity, it's time to think about throwing it out. So you can take a brand new battery, battery that you've never even used, and again, charge it up, put it, put it away for a year, you come back a year later, and it's gonna be pretty much time to just throw it away. So, so it's, some, it's something that I used to do, and you know I didn't quite realize the implications of that. And and of course, it's, well, it was easy because I like to keep, keep them charged. You know, I'm, I, I want to be ready to go and fly at any time. You know, who knows what the weather is going to be like tomorrow or tomorrow morning. So let me keep them charged up, and I'm, you know, so I'm ready to go. But but it's, it's it's the worst thing you can do to your batteries. And if you if you do a, a what's called a storage charge, and it, you know the there's charges now nowadays that actually have a storage mode, so that you say take this battery and do a storage charge on it, and it charge it up or discharge it to bring it down to a 50% level, which is about 3.85 volts per cell. So if you take that battery pack to a storage charge, you know again a brand new battery pack, you put it aside for a year, come back a year later you're only going to lose like maybe 5% of the capacity which which makes sense because these batteries are supposed to be good for at least three years so you know you're going to lose you know 5% of the capacity pretty much no matter you know each year pretty much no matter what you do but if you take care of them they'll be they'll be a, it's, it'll be a good battery pack for at least three years which which you know is good value and you know it's like it's like two you know there's you can take two batteries that came off the exact same assembly line and, and they're other, you know, otherwise identical and their behavior in real life can be very different. I, you know, don't ask me to explain that. But here I have three battery packs. They're all two cell, 500 million power. Um, I'm almost certain that I bought them all at the same time. Um, you know, they're, they're, they all look identical. And as far as I know, I've used them all the same way, but I, I tested them, I, I don't know, maybe six months ago. 
And again, they were all 500 million power batteries. And as far as I know, they all had pre pretty much the same capacity when new. And one of them has 441 uh, million power capacity now. Another one has 430, and I, I wrote on the battery the, the, the capacity at the time I tested it. And the other one has 376. And so that's, 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 that's a lot, you know, that's like what, 65 million power difference in capacity um, between two otherwise identical batteries that I've, that I've used identically because I tend to rotate, you know, use one and then the other. So, you know, unless you actually measure the capacity of a battery, you don't really know. And, and the other thing is that, you know, don't assume that a new battery pack is going to be balanced because not that long ago, I got a new battery pack, measured the, the voltage on each cell, and there was a 0.7 voltage difference between the cells in the battery pack. So, you know, this, this idea, I mean, you know, some folks have a separate balancer and they say, okay, you know, can I just do balancing every 10 charges? I suppose you can, in theory, there's nothing, there's no, you know, I'm not there to stop you, but, um, you know, you're taking your chances because it, it can be hard to predict how, how these batteries are going to behave. So, so, um, so about, you know, long-term storage, some folks, what they like to do is that they'll, they put them in a, in, in a refrigerator. And I suppose you can do that. I think it's a bit of a hassle. You know, you need to, you, you still need to do the storage charge. You need to wrap them up tightly in plastic wrap to keep the moisture out. You know, you put them in the fridge. And, and then, but then you can't just take them out and use them because you need you take them out and you need to let them warm up, which is probably going to take overnight. So, yeah, you can do that. Yes, the battery will last longer if you keep them uh, in, in cold storage. But I think for most of us, it, it's just a hassle. It's not worth it. So I don't really recommend it. You know, I mean, I I, I tend to buy enough batteries for what I'm going to use. You know, of course, it can be hard to predict. But just use them, you know, fly, and just consider it as an expendable item that, you know, after about three years or so, you just need to replace them. And, and like I said before, you know, the rule of thumb is, um, you know, 20, losing 20% 20 of the capacity. So a good way of doing that is whenever you get a new battery pack, do a cycle, you know, discharge them, you know, charge them up, discharge them, you know, bring them back up. and and right on the battery, the capacity, you know, I, I did that with this, but of course, you know, I, I didn't have a discharger when the batteries were, were new. But then, you know, what? once a year, do a um, cycle them, do a discharge cycle, and see how much capacity you've lost. And again, you lose 20%, consider throwing them out. And I mean, so, some folks, they go through this whole big messy, business of, you know, they fill it, you know, they take a gallon of water, they put a cup of salt, they cut the wires off the body, put them in the water, you know, wait a month and then throw them out. And sure, you know, you can do that. To me, that's just a hassle. So I, I just find uh, a good recycling center. And, and for me, the most convenient one is the Staples. You know, all, all Staples uh, office stores will take batteries and it's free of charge and they're happy to do it. You know, I just bring them and say, okay, I have a battery for you, and they're like, okay, no problem, and they just take them. And I know they're gonna they're going to do a reasonable reasonable job of disposing of them. So uh, that's my recommendation, you know, rather than be messing with salt, salt, salty water, and, and who knows what else. Um, the and, and as far as the, the the voltage the voltages that you should take the batteries to, what I use and what I recommend is no lower than 3.2 volts and no higher than 4.2. And there's a couple of reasons for that, but <clears throat> mainly if you look at a discharge curve of a battery, you know, the voltage over time, at first it drops off really quickly, you know, then it levels off for a long time and, you know, average voltage is about 3.7. And then at, at near the end of the charge, it drops off steeply again. So, if you if you stay away from the from those extremes, you know you you, you stick to 3.2 at the bottom and 4.2 at the top, you're really losing a, a relatively small percentage of the capacity. Um, you know, um, I, I'd say it's probably 
I don't know, maybe 10% of the capacity. But what you're doing is that your battery is going to last a lot longer. Because again, when you take it to the extreme on the top or the extreme on the bottom, that's when you hurt it. So, so you know, why, why push your luck? You know, I mean, batteries, you know, you could argue three years is a lot or, or it's not, but make them last as long as possible for you. And, and of course, you know, they, they'll be more reliable and, and all of that. And then my final tip is that watch the temperature. Uh, I've had, uh, I've taken battery packs similar to, to these ones. In fact, that, you know, remember having two or three of this other one that bought at the same time, used the same way, and I left them in the trunk of my car and, it, and, it, and I know it wasn't that hot outside. It was no more than about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And I came back a few hours later and one of them had puffed up. And you know, again, they, they had the same state of charge, same batteries, and you know, so, so these things can be really hard to predict. But a rule of thumb is, no more than 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and the trunk of a car can get really hot really quickly. So, so basically, don't leave them inside a, a, a car with the windows rolled up when it's hot outside because you're just harming, harming the batteries. So anyway, hope you, uh, you found these tips useful. Hope you, your batteries last longer. And you know, if, they take, if you take care of them, they'll take care of you. So till next time.